Well, before the winter meetings start and we see free agents find their landing spots in 2024, the Angels have been rumored to be interested in corner infielder Jamer Candelario. So does he make a good fit for the Halos? Let's talk the pros and cons and make the case for the Angels signing Jamer Candelario. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, you can leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. We love our everydayers. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube. Leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. You know, Mike, not to brag, but uh, we do like to remind everyone every now and then that we're the number one Angels podcast daily. Angels podcast, talking Angels baseball, Monday through Friday. But that's not because of, you know, just our own volition. It's because right. of locked on everydayers who tune in every single day and are there with us every Monday through Friday. In fact, yesterday, the Spotify raps raps wrapped came out yesterday uh-huh. for everybody. <laughs> yeah. You know that one. And a lot of people actually shared their Spotify wrapped with us and we were their number one podcast, Mike. In fact, yep. we heard from Landon Crouch, uh, Brandon Mashenko, Daniel Jolin, Zach Vogel, Jackson Clements, and Chris Cook all shared their Spotify rap with us. So uh, if you're on Twitter or you're on Instagram, post your Spotify rap in a story on Instagram or something, tag Super Halo Bros or tag us on Twitter. If you post your Spotify rap, we'd love to share it and give you a little shout out yep. on the show. So thank you to those six who shared their Spotify rap with us. Chris Cook, Mike, listened to like 6,400 minutes of Locked on Angels this year. I'm, wow. I'm not even sure my wife wants to listen to that many minutes of me. So just Chris kidding. Cook. She loves me. Chris Cook is a good dude. I got to meet him in line at Guardians of the Galaxy at That's Disneyland. That's right. And so, Chris, I want you to know that every time I walk onto that ride, I stop and I pause and I go, family, this is where it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm insufferable and it's beautiful. So it was so nice to meet you, Chris. And thanks for listening and being an everydayer. Hey, before we get started, we just want to let everybody know today we are making the case for J. Mayor Candelario because he's been linked to the Angels uh, earlier in this yeah. offseason. So we thought... If, if they are linked to Jaime Mayor Candelario, I'm going to mess that up a ton of times this episode. <laughs> Better you than me. I'm always right. the one that messes up the names. <laughs> uh, if they are linked to him, we felt like it was a good idea to make the case. So we're going to take yeah. you through the pros and the cons. And then at the end of the episode, Mike and I will give our final verdicts and our suggestions for what the Angels should do. Mike, why don't you get us started before we get into the pros? What Halo fans can expect from Jamer Candelario. Yeah, he is a switch hitting corner infielder. He's been primarily at third base, but he can play some first base. So kind of like Mike Moustakis, except he's Mike, Mike didn't bat uh, right-handed. He just mm-hmm. bat left-handed, mm-hmm. but he plays the similar position and he's uh, a pretty league average guy at both corners. He's capable, but he's not, he's not a Matt Chapman kind of guy, sure. right? Like he's, he's, just a third baseman, just a first baseman that can that can fill in, and you can be confident that he's going to make the plays that he needs to. He's going to make the boring fundamental baseball plays that you expect them Beautiful. to make, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So last season, Johnny, he played in 140 games between the Nationals and then the Cubs. He was traded to the Cubs uh, at the trade deadline. 77 runs scored, 127 hits. 39 doubles, yeah. three triples, 22 home runs, 53 RBIs, eight stolen bases, 53 walks, and 127 Ks. Here's his slash line. 251 batting average, 336 on base. It's pretty good. 471 slugging, and an 807 OPS. That's good for a 119 OPS plus, mm-hmm. which is really good, much better than league average. And over the last four seasons... His slash line has been pretty decent, 254 batting average, 329 on base, 437 slugging, and a 766 OPS with a 112 OPS plus. Johnny has a career 23.5% K rate, 
and a 9.6% walk rate. This is the kind of line and production that you can expect from Candelario. At the plate, Johnny, he's somebody that will make a lot of contact, and he's got a low swinging strike rate, 78 percent contact rate and a 10.2 swinging strike rate, which this team really needs because they did strike out a lot. And we've talked about having somebody like Sean Well at the top of the lineup mm-hmm. that can make contact. It's why I love Michael Stefanik, right? Because Michael Stefanik can make some contact and Candelario seems to be that type of guy, right? Exactly. And, and what's funny is when you, when you think about Candelario, he's, he's just right in the middle, like that 254 average, uh, that slash line is is pretty consistent over the last couple of years. Not and showing then, off, not lagging behind. <laughs> <laughs> right down the middle. Uh, in fact, he's he's kind of right down the middle at the plate in yeah. terms of the league as well. He's 51st percentile in K percentage, 59th percentile in walk percentage, 56th percentile in whiff rate, and 48th percentile in chase rate. So again, not the best, not the worst. And, mm-hmm. and that's kind of, as I was researching this, it's kind of what we are getting out of Jamer Candelario. Let's talk about the pros, Mike. As yeah. a uh, as a switch hitter, here's a pro. He brings something that the Angels really haven't had in a very long time. They had Luis Renjifo and Eduardo Escobar as switch hitters last year, but Renjifo's kind of been the only switch hitter they've had mm-hmm. in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Candelario brings like a second switch hitting bat to this lineup that would be really helpful to the Angels. And here's his splits from last year. Again, Right down the middle. Yeah. Uh, versus righties. I love hitting, these numbers, by the way. Yeah, these are great numbers. Versus righties, he's hitting 251. He's got a 333 on base, a 479 slugging, and an 813 OPS. Versus lefties, a 254 average, mm-hmm. 342 uh, on base, 451 slugging, and a 792 OPS. So he's got slightly a little bit more power versus righties. He's got a better walk rate against lefties, but from both sides of the plate, He's very consistent and right down the middle, 251 versus righties, 254 versus lefties. Here's another pro, Johnny, since he's so consistent from both sides of the plate, it won't be a situation like with Renjifo, who's been a whole lot better batting left-handed, batting, I'm sorry, against left-handed pitchers from the right side of the plate. He's Mm -hmm. a much better hitter, and it seems to have a bit more power from the right-hand side. And so for Candelario, he, he also has the ability to play first, and third, which Mm -hmm. I think for this team will be really beneficial. Obviously, Candelario would be a great option at third if and when, should we just take get rid of if in that sentence? Yeah. When Rendon gets hurt. Right. uh, We'll we'll get a lot more consistency from him in the field, but also from him at the plate, and we'll be able to count on him at the corner. And Johnny, he's he's a pretty competent third baseman. We want to share those stats? Yeah, again, league average, Yeah. the basic fundamental plays he should be making he's making uh, last year he had a 0.2 0.2 ultimate zone rating so zero is again just right down the middle right uh, he did have two outs above average and then two runs above average which is essentially another way of saying runs prevented so those are situations where he did make the flashy play he did mm-hmm. show a little range and a little bit of arm right and show a little bit of speed when he's making the play over there so although it's a small sample size Nolan Shanuel only hit 217 against lefties last year. So that might make the case for Candelario to play first on days when a lefty starts against the Angels over Shanuel. That might be an option as well. Here's another pro, Johnny. He provides some lineup flexibility. Yeah. It's important to consider who batted ahead of him and behind him. But here is where Candelario was batting most last year, batting second, 59 plate appearances. 269, 322, 423, and a 745 OPS. When he was batting third, where he hit a lot, yeah, 232, played the most. yeah, 232 plate appearances, 236, 312, 462, and a 773 OPS. He had 10 home runs and 32 RBIs. And here's where and it gets interesting right he, here. He hit fourth, fifth, and sixth. So in the fourth spot, cleanup spot, 83 plate appearances. Listen to how these numbers get better. 286, Mm -hmm. 398, 543, 941 OPS. Johnny, in the fifth spot, he hit even better, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He had a 976 OPS with a 345 batting average, a 552 slugging, 424 on base. And then in the sixth spot, he had 38 plate appearances, 
with a 797 OPS. So to me, Mike, top of the order makes sense for him at like mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. And then middle of the order at five or six would be really solid spots for Candelario. Uh, another pro for him is a little bit of like modest slugging production. We saw yeah. those slugging numbers there based on where he's batting in the order. But he was six in the league in doubles with 39. And that matched Matt Chapman. Mm. Uh, he was one behind Mookie Betts and Marcus Simeon and only three behind Corey Seager in terms of doubles. So again, he's, he's got a little bit of pop, not always going to be the home run hitter. He did have 22 last year, but that, that slugging percentage of taking the extra base would be really helpful in the middle of this order. Johnny, one of the, I think the best pro when it comes to Candelario is he's durable. He's missed yes. 16 games or less due to minor injuries since 2018. And in 2019, Mm -hmm. he did hurt his thumb that kept him out for 56 games, but everything else has been pretty minimal, which the angels desperately need. So that, that alone makes me go, Ooh, I kind of like this guy, right? Right. (laughs) Finally, Mike, I think the last pro here is that you can lock him down for the next couple of years. He's going Mm -hmm. into his age 30 season. He's projected to land around two to four years in terms of a contract. And looking at the metrics, I was looking at StatCast. There's not any noticeable regression where you see like, oh, that, I don't know, that slugging percentage is really dropping since 2018. Like nothing out of the ordinary that says, "Uh uh-oh, red flag, right? And I think that's comforting to know. Uh, The the final point here is that he's not going to cost a draft pick. And that's huge. Yeah, because he was traded mid-season, and so he didn't get qualified for a qualifying offer. So some of the, some of the pros there mm-hmm. stand out, Mike, what stands out to you the most? Uh, durability for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love the fact that he can be somebody that can slot in this lineup pretty much anywhere. And I think mm. that that's what the angels need. And so you can find out, gosh, where would he really help us produce and his on base percentage, John, when he hit fourth, fifth and sixth, the lowest on base percentage was sixth. 368 Mm -hmm. Uh, he's getting on base and that's the thing that the angels need is to get on base plus 39 doubles he's in he's in scoring position 29 29 doubles he's oh wait no it's 39 39. i'm sorry yeah 39 39 he's in he's in scoring position and yes with with the new hitting approach with johnny washington coming in i anticipate the angels coming through in those moments and being intentional and moving runners over in those moments so yeah the pros, the pros look good, Johnny, for somebody like Condelario coming over to the Angels in 2024. I like the fact that you you know what you're going to get. Like, yes, the, the, sometimes these guys are coming off a, a huge season where it's like, yeah, but maybe next year he outperforms or underperforms. And you don't know what you're going to get. Candelario has been so consistent mm-hmm. in his stats that what you see is what you get, and I think that this makes for a good case to say, hey, if the Angels want him you can trust that the production they're going to get out of him is going to remain consistent. And again, no drop off, no significant changes, no decline happening with Candelario. Hey, we appreciate you making Locked on Angels your first listen every single day. In fact, we're just getting going here. We talked about the pros coming up on Locked on Angels. We got to talk about the cons, Mike. We got to talk about what might hold the Angels back from making this signing and share those with our listeners and viewers. So we'll get to those cons in just a minute. Watching sports is a whole lot of fun, Johnny, whether it's baseball or basketball, whether it's football. I've even enjoyed watching hockey. My son loves hockey. And here's what's great about watching sports is that you can find a team or a player to really root for, but FanDuel makes it even better, makes it even more sweet because you don't have to watch just your favorite team to root for a certain player. You can say, go ahead. FanDuel, more like fun duel, right? (laughs) I no, guess, right? No, 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 please don't do that. Uh, but FanDuel makes it fun because, there you go, I used your word, because you can root for your team, but you also root for somebody else when you place a $5 bet, a $5 money line bet. And when you do, you can get $150 in bonus bets when you win. And so that's what's beautiful about FanDuel is they make it worth your while. That's 150 bucks if your team wins with a $5 money line bet. So I know you've been thinking about joining FanDuel. Now's the best time to do that. And we've mentioned on this show before that FanDuel is so easy to use. The app is really accessible, explains everything that you need to know, especially if you're new to this. And so I would invite you to download FanDuel right now. Go the, go to their app, wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And if, again, you don't know anything about that, it explains to you what it means and how it works. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. 
Get involved this NFL season. Bet on your favorite team, and when you win, you can win 150 bucks if your team wins. That's fantastic. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and you've got Locked On Angels here, of course. We're here every Monday through Friday for you. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget that Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel on YouTube. Head on over and search Locked On Sports today. They've got you covered 24-7, covering all the top stories in sports from every single league with all the local experts of Locked On, plus all the national shows they offer as well. So go go on over to Locked On Sports today on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and be part of the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel so as we make the case for jamie or candelario signing with the angels we shared the pros how about the cons and the first thing that i'm thinking of johnny is signing a 30 year old third baseman with relatively mild injury history it makes me a <laughs> i know where you're going a with bit this. nervous right <laughs> because we signed rendon and he wasn't really injury prone right yeah. and then all of a sudden it fell apart now Here's here's what makes me nervous is that he may have had some really great workouts and stretches before in previous seasons and a bit of luck, right? Does his luck run out when he signs mm-hmm. with the Angels? Like that would be a bit scary for me. Uh, I, I don't think that you're going to lock yourself into a long, long, long-term contract with mm-hmm. him. But I do think that it's something that would cause me to pause if I'm GMPM because it didn't work out with Rendon and that shouldn't be the only reason why you wouldn't go after him but there is a 30 year old playing third playing first doesn't have this injury history is is he now going to start breaking down those those things would be on my on the top on the top of my mind right yeah you think about the fact that you've got this guy coming in to play third base because your third baseman can't play every day because he's hurt all the time. Yeah. And you're signing him at the same age for the same position. It's not going to cost as much as Rendon. And it's definitely not going to be as long of a contract as Rendon. But Mike, this, this is a lot of the issue with free agency is that these guys come off free agency around 29, Mm -hmm. 30. And Mm -hmm. this is the risk that you take. I think that's why like Cody Bellinger is tempting because he's only 28. Yeah. I think Yamamoto, obviously being a 25 year old ace that you can Mm -hmm. lock up for the next 10 years and feel comfortable about that. That's the kind of stuff that is really exciting about this free agent off season. But yeah, I think there is a risk in signing a, a a 30 year old third baseman. Right. Um, Again, it won't cost as much as Rendon, but if the guy you're using to replace Rendon also gets hurt, then you're up a Creek without a paddle and that's just no fun at all. Mike, what are the angels willing to spend? I think, this could be a bit of a con and Mm -hmm. let me just break it down for you because there's, there's a number of projections out there, but two that I really trust are the athletic Mm -hmm. and MLB trade rumors. Here is where MLB trade rumors has Candelario four years, 70 million, which comes out to 17 and a half million per year. The athletic has him at two years, 15 million, which is only 7.5 million. A year now, he only did make five million in 2023. So, if that's the range and people are having a hard time placing what he's going to get, what's it going to take to one beat the competition? And two, what are the angels willing to spend? Because, yeah, if it's a competitive market for Candelario, then that 17 and a half million over you know for four years, 70 million that's going to be the ceiling and you're going to have to compete with other people who want Candelario at third base. But then you have seven and a half million per year on a two year deal. Yeah. It's just, it's hard to, it's hard to really define what kind of deal Candelario could get. So I really kind of wonder if it's a case of who's going to get to him first, Mm -hmm. who's going to make him a deal that he appreciates. And then where does he want to be? And, and I wonder you know, if he, if he would want to be part of Anaheim, I think the the new coaching staff really adds a lot of incentive, but yeah, to me, I think uh, it's really hard to peg down where he's going to land in terms of a contract and what the angels are going to be willing to spend for him. Yeah. Johnny, traditionally having a 
power hitting third baseman is mm -hmm. what teams would go for. Now mm -hmm. I know in today's analytics, it's not always the case, but the question the angels have to wrestle with, and it might be a con is do they want more out of their third baseman, right? Mm -hmm. Do they want more power out of their third baseman? The angels are likely going to get a lot of power from a full season of Ohapi and perhaps a full season from Mike Trout. I think Candelario can produce 13 to 20, 22 home runs. That's right? about where he's been in his career. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's, he's been about average there. So we can expect kind of that if he continues with that trend with, with, with a lack of, of power and a more of a on base guy in, in Shauna well at the top of the lineup, the angels are, are missing at the power corners, a power mm -hmm. hitter. Mm -hmm. Now Rendon could be that guy, but last year was not that guy when he no. was in the lineup, he could hardly hit a single into the outfield. And so that could possibly be a con for the angels is that are not getting a power hitting Matt Chapman type or a rod type, or, you know what I mean? Like one of those really strong <laughs> Josh teams. young over in rain and the, on the Rangers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I think that that could be a con and, and could be a detriment to the angels signing Candelario. Something I think we need to consider. Should I say consider since it's a con, <laughs> please don't. Do we already have what we'd be getting in Candelario? Huh. Because Brandon Drury primarily plays second. He could play some first. He hasn't played third yet, but yeah. he certainly could, right? And so you have that option to put him over there if Rendon is not going to be available. Mike, I hate to say it, but Luis Renjifo's production last mm. year in about 15 less games was very similar to what Candelario can provide. Um he does come up slightly short of Candelario's OPS plus from last season. He did have a better average than Candelario. He had 17 home runs versus 22. Again, that's in, you know, 15 less games. He also did get hurt. Um, the defense is not as good as Candelario because yeah. Candelario plays league average defense. Renjifo certainly does not do that. But could that improve under Ron Washington? And you and I have... Uh, clamored for Renjifo to get consistent playing time. And I don't know if that's second or, or third or what yeah. have you, Yeah. but the guy's got to find a way into the lineup every day to be productive. And I just want, and, and I, it's not that I'm not okay with signing Candelario. I just wonder, do the angels have a need in Candelario or do they already have what he brings to the table in Brandon Drury and Renjifo and, mm. and whatnot. And, and even Rendon, like what you're yeah. going to get out of Rendon is, you know, some doubles and hitting into the gap and whatnot. So I just kind of wonder if the angels already have what they could be getting in Candelario and maybe they don't need to spend the money on that. To me, that's a con. It's, it's a bit of a reach in yeah. terms of a con because you can never sure. have enough of these kinds of guys. Sure. But to me, it's a little bit of a reach to say, are we already getting this from people on the team? Now, to me, the answer is, well, you know what you're getting with Candelario versus, hey, could Ren Hifo do yeah. well with a full season? So I think yeah. that's the tension there. But at the end of the day, um, you wonder if that money could be spent in, in other areas. All right, Johnny. Pros, cons, Jaimeir Candelario coming to Anaheim, not coming to Anaheim. Do you have a final verdict? Where do you lean? Are you pro? Are you con? Would you sign them or would you pass? Now, if if this were me and I was in charge and money is not an issue here, I think I would bring on Jamie Candelario because I think you could get him for, you know, age 30 through 33, the next four seasons and feel pretty good about that. Just have that third base spot insured. And what I like about it, Mike, is... We've, we've reiterated it several times on this show. What you see is what you get. What's that yeah. song? What you see is what you get. I love that song. Um, <laughs> and again, it's it's not anything flashy, Yeah. but it's consistent. It's consistent play from Jamie Candelario. It's going to be a guy who, you know, might miss two weeks worth of games over the course of a season, according to his injury history. I don't think I would be too worried about the whole thing about signing a 30 year old, because again, it's not Rendon money and it's not Rendon years mm -hmm. either. So mm -hmm. even if it was a two year deal, Mike, I would feel comfortable making this decision, but because 
it's funny because we find ourselves in this situation because we can't count on Anthony Rendon. Yeah. And so now the front office has to consider somebody like Jamie or Candelario because they know that he's going to be a consistent guy and a consistent presence. Now, every year we come in and we're hoping that Rendon, ah, he'll be, he'll be better this year and, yeah. and, and he'll get through it and he won't get injured. But you, I mean, history shows like, you, no, you can't, you can't assume that anymore. You have to assume that he's going to be injured and he's not going to play and he's going to fall out. So mm-hmm. to me, the insurance here of Candelario and what he brings and the consistency that he brings that 250, 55 average, you know, 13 to 22 home runs, um, league average defense. It's better than nothing. And it's better than yeah. being like, Oh crap, we got to call up uh Kyron Paris or LeVon yeah. Soto and throw yeah. him in because you don't have anybody else. So to me, I make this move. I think the angels could make this move and should make this move. Now I will say, I don't want to make this move at the expense of other areas of need because mm-hmm. they really need, and, and I'm on this train 110%. They need Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yeah. And if they're going to play this game where they can't afford all the things that they need, then they need to take this Candelario money and put it toward Yamamoto. Mm-hmm. They need to put it toward the bullpen. Mm-hmm. They have to improve those areas first. To me, it's all about the pitching and the bullpen before the offense. I think the offense, even if even if you run out a subpar guy, mm-hmm. there are other guys in this lineup who can, you know, pick that up a little bit. So to me, I would say yes to Candelario, but not at the expense of other areas of need. And if the Angels decide that they can't do it all, then the money needs to go to pitching and bullpen. I'm I'm gonna play the game that the Angels are a large market team and they understand that and they're going to mm-hmm. spend some money. So mm-hmm. I'm going to play, I'm going to play that game. And so I think what you just said about pitching, that's a given. So anytime we talk about, Hey, they should get this guy or get that guy. It's a given. They should have starting pitching. Mm-hmm. They should have bullpen guys. That's a given. Put that aside for a moment. Let's talk about Candelario. Yeah. I think that they need to make this move. Yeah. And I think that they need to sign him. Yeah. And, and if they can get him for two years and, and, and and cheap at 7.5 million, that's beautiful. If they get him at four for 70, that feels a bit high. Mm-hmm. But I do think that he's a consistent guy that has proven to be somebody that you can count on. He's not going to fall off a cliff. At yeah. least all indications are that he's not going to fall off a cliff. And all of his expected stats are not are indications that he's not going to fall off a cliff. And the reason why you get him, Johnny, is simply because you can't count on Anthony Rendo. Right. And, and, and they need to treat what they did last year with third base in the same way this season. They mm-hmm. went and got moose. They went and got play, right? They, they just knew that Rendon wasn't going to be there. Now Rendon sounds like he's going to be there. I think things will be different with Washington at the helm, but I would go and get this guy simply because of his flexibility, simply because of how he can impact the lineup. I would go and get this guy because he has a, a switch hitting ability. Yeah. I would grab this guy because you can count on him and he's durable yeah. and you never know what's going to happen with, Rendon, but Johnny, you never know what's going to happen with Sean Owell. I hope he has a remarkable season, but we don't know what's going to happen. He might get figured out. He didn't show much power. All of those things are factors. Fair. So to have somebody like Candelario on this team, I think would be a great benefit offensively. I think it'd be a great benefit defensively. And what it does is it gives depth. And I know that we've, we're banging the drum when Hifo needs some time to play, but I think it gives depth to this team. But it also allows you to say, could I package Renhifo, maybe a Taylor Ward, yeah. and go and get such and such, right? And then I think what it does for you is this move helps you to improve your team in other areas. And it might be that they can sign Candelario and then make a trade for a pitcher, a bullpen piece, whatever, with some of the pieces that they have currently on this team. So I'm in, I think the pros outweigh the cons. And so I would sign Candelario to a deal and I would have him be on my team in 2024. You made two really good points there. Number one is uh, the flexibility in the lineup and also being able to play first. Like I mentioned with the pros replacing Sean Owell against the lefty. Yeah. But number two uh, is the fact that we're excited for Ohapi. We're excited for Neto. We're excited for Sean Owell. but yes, they, they could have a sophomore slump. They yep. all three could, could struggle and get figured out. And so you want to have somebody who's been there before and is a veteran and can take over the either one of those corner spots for Sean Owell or Rendon. 
Another point that I really appreciated is the flexibility that it gives you because once you have a Candelario, some of these other guys, like you said, Renhifo, become expendable yep. in the sense that you can use them as trade pieces. So yeah, I guess it does open up a lot of options here. I'll be honest with you, Mike. I think I was reaching for some of the cons. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say this. It was easier to come up with pros yep. than it was for cons yep. when it comes to Candelario. And I think that's a good thing. And and I think all of the cons that we listed are are reasonable and worth considering. But I'm with you. I think the pros far outweigh the cons when it comes to Jamie or Candelario. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And every day, remember, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. They are there for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at Lockdown Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Once again, if you if we're on your Spotify wrap, share that with us. We'd love to repost that and also give you a shout out on the show as well. Hey, Mike, what do we have on deck for Friday's show? Johnny, do you remember when Ron Washington had his press conference? What every fan said? Do I? At press conference? Yes. Every fan was like, we're going to run through a wall. Well, guess what? Barry Enright is calling me to run through a wall again. <laughs> His interview with Sam Blum was fantastic. And so we're going to share that. Thank you, Sam Blum, for interviewing him. If you're not subscribed to The Athletic and Sam Blum, do that right now. That's yeah, like a dollar right now. It so is fantastic. It. And this article is fantastic. John and I are going to talk it through with you tomorrow on Locked On Angels. Really looking forward to that conversation. Until a pitching then, coach that knows what he's doing. I know. He actually, uh, somebody, somebody shouted you out, Mike, and grabbed a, a clip of the show the other day when you said Reed Detmers is going to be ace caliber. And they said, Hey, it sounds like Barry Enright agrees with you. So yeah. that was pretty cool. But uh, looking forward to that conversation until then, my name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother, John. All right, friends, we are looking forward to that conversation. We hope to see you back here tomorrow. Not showing off, not lagging behind. <laughs> Do you remember the kid's name that George wanted? Steven Corin. No. Steven Corin. Steven Corin. <laughs>